Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. You are looking at the Tachikawa Kai 94i Japanese Heavy Fighter. It is a premium aircraft. Pretty awesome looking design. Fantastic paint schemes, as you can see. It is characterized by powerful large caliber armaments, effective against aircraft with high survivability. It has good survivability itself, but it is a large aircraft and therefore vulnerable, including its engines. A high airspeed, long lasting boost, has a 20 second boost. Uh, it is said to be ineffective in maneuvering combat, so this is not an aircraft you want to have dogfights in. At least not with anything other than maybe a, another heavy aircraft or maybe a, maybe a ground attack aircraft, but certainly not a regular run-of-the-mill fighter. Effective in mid-altitude combat in, in destroying small amounts of ground targets. Very small. Yeah, this is not a very effective ground attack aircraft. I usually just drop the bombs on maybe an anti-aircraft position and call it a day in terms of the bombs. Stat-wise, its maximum optimal altitude is 2,000 meters, so very much a mid-altitude heavy fighter. A service ceiling of 4,000 meters. Rate of climb, 109 meters per second. This aircraft is prone to stalling. See here its stall speed is 180 kilometers per hour. Not the worst, but uh, but it is up there. Average time to turn 360 degrees, 15.5 seconds. So yeah, it is like turning a semi truck with the trailer. <laughs> um, Rate of roll, 180 degrees per second, so that's pretty abysmal. Uh, maximum optimal speed, 720 kilometers per hour. Airspeed, its cruising speed is 594 kilometers per hour. Boost speed up to 703 kilometers per hour. Boost duration, as I said, 20 seconds. Maximum dive speed, 850 kilometers per hour. It carries two bombs that do cumulative damage of 8,800. Resupply time on the bombs is 120 seconds. It has a 30 millimeter cannon, two of them actually, and two 37 millimeter cannons. And collectively they do 870 damage per second. An optimal distance of 580 meters. So could be a little bit longer on the optimal distance there, but it is what it is. So there are the two 30 millimeter cannons, 160 damage per second each, 200 rounds per minute, 580 effective firing range. Two 37 millimeter cannons, 240 damage per second, 120 rounds per minute. Again, 580 meter effective firing range. Would love to see that a little bit higher. But uh, yeah, is what it is. I do have this aircraft at specialist level. And therefore, we have all the equipment choices available for the aircraft. For the cockpit, I went with advanced culinator sight which increases accuracy of forward firing offensive armament by 11%, plus 10% chance of causing a fire as a bonus characteristic, and also as a bonus characteristic, plus 5% accuracy when firing at moving targets, which you really need accuracy on this aircraft, as much as you can get, really. Uh, your other option would have been cockpit armor, uh, which would have increased the cruise resistance to injuries, but you'd lose aircraft maneuverability, and eh, it's already pretty abysmal in the maneuverability category, so I don't think I would want to make it worse. 
Uh, there is no piece of equipment for the airframe slot. For the engine, I went with improved uprated engine, which increases acceleration without boost by 3.5% and cruise speed by 1.9%. Bonus characteristics of 0.5% maximum speed with boost activated. The negative is minus 11% resistance to fire, but I do have the fire skill for our pilot to help reduce the damage that's done by fire. Your other options would have been engine armor protection, which uh, increases the engine's resistance to damage, but at the cost of aircraft speed. And I really think aircraft speed is your, your really your only defensive measure with this uh, heavy fighter, because you certainly aren't going to win in the maneuverability department. Uh, combined injection boost system, which would have increased boost efficiency, but at the cost of boost availability. And I, I do want that boost as available as often as possible. A lightweight power unit, which would increase aircraft maneuverability, but at the cost of engines resistance to damage. And we already have a vulnerable engine, so I don't know that we would want to make it worse. And I don't know that, you know, increasing this aircraft's maneuverability would be all that fruitful. We do have uh, two pieces of equipment for the forward firing weapons. Uh, improved reinforced bolt carriers, which increases burst length by 7.9%, plus 2% rate of fire of forward firing offensive armament as a bonus characteristic. The negative is, and this is a negative for this aircraft, it hurts, minus 5.7% accuracy of forward firing offensive armament. But I do think it's good to have that extra burst length because these cannons do overheat pretty quickly. Uh, improved gas operated action, which plus 6.8% rate of fire of forward firing offensive armament, plus 5% chance of causing a fire, which is nice. But again, you lose more accuracy. So that, that does hurt, for sure. Your other option would have been long gun barrels, which would increase range of fire at the cost of burst length. Now, that is an option just because it would not decrease accuracy, so you could go with that. Perfectly uh, reasonable choice. Consumables went with emergency medical kit which restores our pilot to health if our pilot gets injured. Very important, I think. That does seem to happen quite a bit. This, this aircraft is, says it has high survivability, but it, I don't know. When I fly it, it feels pretty squishy. A secondary control system, which restores controllability of wings and tail. Again, I think that's pretty important. Uh, emergency engine cooling, you really need that, again, for defensive measures. Uh, and just to get into the battle as soon as possible as well. It improves the engine cooldown rate by five times for 10 seconds. And since we do have a vulnerable engine, a must is emergency engine restart system, which repairs the damaged engine. Pretty important. Uh, for ammunition, I have 175 of these fragmentation ammunition in the in my uh, depot, so I did go ahead and equip those. Why not? What the hell, right? Uh, they do maximum chance of inflicting critical damage and are recommended for auto cannons. You'd be perfectly fine with the universal ammunition, uh, which increases chance of causing fire and inflicting critical damage. So I don't think you'll see any appreciable decrease in performance by going with the universal ammunition. Sometimes people really worry about that issue. For pilot skills, uh, to increase our accuracy, I did go with Marksman 1 and Marksman 2, uh, both of which decrease uh, dispersion of forward firing weapons uh, and increase firing accuracy at actively maneuvering targets by 10% in the case of Marksman 2, which is really important skill to have there. Uh, engine Guru 1, which increases engine thrust by 3%. If I had the skill points, I'd also go with uh, Engine Guru 2. But uh, I think the Marksman 2 is just probably more important. 
And as I mentioned earlier, I went with fire resistance to deal with that increased chance of fire that we have on this aircraft. Paint schemes. You are currently looking at um, winter, is it? Yeah, winter. Uh, this is summer. Desert. And marine. I like marine personally. Uh, that is really sharp. And of course, one of the unique things about this aircraft, other than the tail design, are the propellers both uh, in front of the pilot and behind the pilot. Uh, pusher prop aircraft. I think those are pretty cool actually like the looks of that okay so that is my build for the Kai 94i let's head into battle and see how it actually performs all right so our battle in the Kai 94 be over the Alpine Gamut, Snow and Ashes Theater of Operation. And we'll head first to the military base at center map. Maybe do a little climbing first and uh, see what's up in the nosebleed section. Pilots, get ready for action. Let's go. What do we have? Oh, to Papa. Heavy fighter up here. If this aircraft has a specialty, I would say that it is heavy fighters. Ground attack aircraft as well. Did we get him too? Ah, oh. nope. He made it. He's got to be hurting though. Got some good shots in on him. Might be a bad idea to <laughs> ram a plane that's call sign tank. Alright, so we've got a B-17G coming up here. Those 50 cals can be pretty vicious. Yeah, I really didn't want to ram a uh, B-17G. That would not be good. Come on, catch up. There we go. Okay, you would hope you don't miss a B-17G, right? I mean, that's a pretty big target up there. Fighter coming in here. Our 
That's an ME 410. Multi roll off to our left. But can I really like to stay on that? 10. There we go. I got the B17G back up again here. Don't know if we have the uh, health for it though. Those 50 cows can be vicious. Well, if we're going to catch up to it. So we've got some help at least. There we go. All right, and we're hurting on health here. Uh, what do we have over here? Heavy fire. Ooh. Uh, that's what is that? We have 109. High climbing aircraft. It's certainly more maneuverable than we are. So if we get in a dogfight, we're losing that. Our best bet is just dive straight down and hope for the best. It's got good roll maneuverability. You maybe have forgot about us. All right. Hopefully, we took out that ground target. Head into the airfield here. We've got this bomber up here that is headed to the plant. Come on, clock, let us in. Looks like it's. Oh, wow. Okay. So let's head over here and see if we can save the plant. Hang in there. You'll soon be cut off from support. I say again, support will not be available. This mosquito here. We're gonna use our boost to get over here as soon as we can, but um, maybe too little too late, I'm afraid. Oh. That's good. Is coming around. Is it the bomber? Yeah. Is that a bomber up here? Let's see if we can take it out. Okay, well, at least the bomber's not going to be taking out our plant. But it looks like the military base. Just putting a hurting on it. What is down here? Uh, we've got a ground attack aircraft and don't uh, wait too late to pull up out of a dive with these things because yeah it can be tough sometimes to get out of one of those dives. Another IL-8 over here. Looks like it's headed towards our airfield. So we'll want to stop that. 
on a high for an ILA though, isn't it? Fighter here, Mosquito working on us, trying to anyway. Let's see if we can finish the IL-8. Then we can deal with that Mosquito. Or... There's the Mosquito. Well... Indeed, we did do what we could. All right, well, number one spot on the team, two chevrons on the grade rank, subjugator, and effective fire. Let's head back to the hangar and take a look at the after action report. Okay, so 110,074 in currency, 2106 in experience points, 105 in free experience points, eight kills, three assess, one sector captured. We did uh, get shot down twice, but we did get the Avenger accolade there. So one of the uh, aircraft that had shot us down, we took care of. It was good to get that. 9,580 in personal points. All right, folks, so that is the Kai 94i. Love the paint schemes on this aircraft. Have to say it is not my favorite aircraft. Just to be straightforward with you guys. But it does pack a punch. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you really enjoy it. And that's really what's important, right? But uh, it can be effective, as you saw. And uh, fun to fly. And if you get the Kai 94i, and at specialist level even, I hope you have great success in it.